Hi you guys, it's Amanda with Healthy House on the Block and I'm here with another weekly tip and video on creating an indoor space that truly supports your health and your wellness. This week we are answering this question about BPA. So is BPA safe? A lot of times we are at the store, we see maybe a water bottle or a food storage item that says BPA free or you're buying canned food and it says BPA free liner. So we just assume that this item is completely safe for our use, for storing our food in, for storing our water in. And the truth is, what is replacing the BPA toxin is another bisphenol toxin that is just as harmful. It has all of the same negative health impacts, but it's completely unregulated. And so in actuality, BPA free could technically be worse for us in the long run than something that has BPA or contains BPA because the levels have to be regulated. So this week we are going to talk all about how to avoid BPA toxins coming into your house, how to go through your home and remove items that could contain BPA or bisphenol toxins, and we're going to talk about the negative health effects and some really easy ways that you can make your kitchen completely free of all bisphenol toxins. So often we just hear that plastic really should be avoided, but a lot of times I feel like we don't actually know why. And I know for a long time, I really felt unclear as to why plastic was one of the most harmful materials in my home. But once I started researching the properties of plastic and especially plastic containing bisphenol, I quickly realized just why this material should be avoided. So for me, it really started back when my first daughter was born in 2012. BPA had just been banned from many children's plastics, including baby bottles. And I had found some BPA-free bottles to put on my registry, and I felt like I was making just a really positive choice. But there was something that was just kind of like nagging at me inside as my kids grew and questioned they wanted to know why glass would even be better compared to a plastic bottle if it didn't contain BPA and what I soon realized was that this sneaking suspicion that BPA wasn't the only toxin was correct. BPA was regulated and banned in a lot of products in the U.S. but the replacement for BPA was just as bad. And I learned this through seeking out the information. It was never given to me or told to me in a report. I never saw it on TV. Instead, all the research and the news focused on was finding products that are BPA-free and how healthy it was to use plastic that just didn't have this bisphenol A in the plastic. So unfortunately, There is still this misconception that BPA-free plastic is completely safe for use. And as we go through this deep dive into bisphenol toxins as a whole, I think you're definitely going to see that it is just not a safe toxin. So bisphenol is a chemical toxin. It is found in compound form that is primarily used in plastics as well as epoxy resins. Bisphenol is produced in large quantities due to the amount of plastic that we have in our world. And so we are exposed to it all the time. Bisphenol is manufactured using a variety of different exact formulas. And this is why there are so many different labels and letters to classify this plastic component. And that's what we're going to look at, the really big ones. So obviously BPA. This is the most common type of bisphenol, and you've likely heard a lot about this one. It is the component of plastic that has gotten so much attention publicly. Most plastic products now boast that they are BPA-free, but as you're going to see in these next slides, that isn't always a safe option. A lot of times you can tell if something actually has bisphenol in it because the label for the recyclable label is going to have a 7 on it, so that's something you can look for. So the first is bisphenol B, so BPB. 
Bisphenol B has a lot of similar properties to bisphenol A when we're talking about the endocrine disrupting properties. So the structure of the actual chemical is very similar and the health effects appear to be very similar in various research studies that have been done. BPB is another toxin that is being found in urine and breast milk in very high concentrations, and this is due to our constant exposure. So the problem with this is that manufacturers are not required to disclose if BPB is present in any food packaging or plastic items. Bisphenol S is another one, BPS. It's a cousin of BPA and commonly found in can linings, thermal receipt paper, and other plastic products. It has similar health risks to BPA, and yet it is widely used without disclosure. The pathways that BPS takes in our body are actually very different than BPA. However, they still have similar outcomes in terms of the negative health effects. And then finally, bisphenol F. So while BPF is currently replacing BPA in many products, it still has a very similar chemical makeup that has these health effects that are similar in nature as well. So bisphenol F is actually prepared by using a reaction of phenol and formaldehyde as a mixture. BPF is most often used in epoxy resins and adhesives around your home. So while there are a plethora of other bisphenols out there, the only one that is truly regulated is BPA. And so as we go on, you're going to see the health effects of any bisphenol are harmful to adults, children, and even unborn babies. Yet the only chemical compound that has so far been banned in some products and regulated is this BPA. It's simply replacing one toxic compound of bisphenol with another equally toxic material. Unfortunately, now what happens is the product can boast that they're BPA-free, making us all feel like this is a green and safe product. And in actuality, a BPA-free plastic item is just as harmful, if not more, as one that does contain BPAs. So let's take a look at some of the health effects. Over 90% of individuals in the United States carry bisphenol in their bodies, What's alarming is that our bodies actually break down and remove bisphenol within just a few days. So the fact that there are measurable amounts within most humans in the U.S. means that we are taking bisphenol in as fast as our bodies can get rid of it. Bisphenol A has been shown to alter hormone production in the brain. It has been known to be an endocrine active chemical, so it alters the cells and tissues receiving the hormones as it works mimicking estrogen. It has also been linked to an increased risk of childhood asthma when children were exposed to the chemical at an early age or even in utero. There was another study done in 2018 that actually compared concentrations of several bisphenol toxins in rats and its negative effects on their reproductive system. And what this study suggests is that all forms of bisphenol toxins are toxic and they all reduce the amount of testosterone produced in males. So bisphenol B also was linked to chronic reproductive problems specifically. Bisphenol S, which has been replacing BPA in food packaging and containers, has been shown to leach into water and food with several negative health effects. A study from February of 2020 shows that although BPS works through different pathways than BPA, which we mentioned before, it still causes the equivalent health effects of endocrine disruption, gestational diabetes, and metabolic disorders. The study also showed that PS was actually more toxic to the reproductive system. It was also linked to the promotion of certain types of breast cancers. And then BPF, bisphenol F, is found in much lower quantities around the United States. However, it still has health effects that are similar to BPA. BPA. 
So BPF is metabolized very rapidly. And while it does not stay in the body for long, the fact that it is present in our bodies shows that we are being constantly exposed. BPF mimics estrogenic activity, and it's also been linked to obesity. And so many products made after 2011 and 2012 do not contain BPA, but many of these items now contain another type of bisphenol. So if you want to specifically avoid just BPA, you want to look for the seven on the recycle label of a plastic product. Otherwise, this is a list of all the products that contain bisphenols within our home. But of course, the good news is that you can make better choices. I think the best and easiest way to reduce exposure to bisphenol in your home is to really ditch your plastic wherever you can, but especially in the kitchen. So some of my favorite alternatives to storing food and non-plastic materials would be using bees wrap instead of plastic wrap. It would be using metal containers and glass food storage containers instead of plastic. You can eat and drink out of stainless steel and glass more than plastic and then opt for a silicone to-go bag instead of those snack bags that are made of plastics. We also know that bisphenols are in cookware that is nonstick. So opt for stainless steel or 100% ceramic wherever you can. And then finally, try to avoid using one-time use products that are plastic. You can use compostable like from Repurpose, which is a great option if you need to have one-time use in a pinch. So You also want to avoid touching receipts when possible, as the BPF and BPS that are present in the thermal paper is easily absorbed through our skin. A lot of times I just don't even get a receipt anymore because I don't need it. And then finally, you can think about replacing kids' toys and teethers with plastic-free alternatives like silicone or wood. Thank you so much for being here. I hope that you will subscribe to my channel because I am here every single week talking about different areas of the home and how to improve them to create a space that truly supports your health and your wellness.